<clears throat> well, I'm trying to get all my videos finished so I can go down to Port Penryn, Bangor again and continue working on my boat. And so I have a lot of videos that I've just been keeping waiting to be worked on, so I just have to finish those off really. One of them is a banger and the other one is of how Sarah became Tinkerbell and Tinkerbell became Sarah. Some interesting developments. Um, just have to make sure we've got that <coughs> enough light in here. Try that. Yeah, there have been some interesting developments, and I had a look inside Sarah, and she's no good. Yeah. She Here's a big crane at Dickies. That's where they hoist them out. One coming out soon. Some interesting boats here at Dickies. The whole bunch down this way. Nice wooden ones. Sarah must be amongst these lots somewhere. I don't know where. Just arrived at what's this boatyard called? It's a waterfront, waterfront marine. marine. Waterfront marine. I just see Sarah's there. It's nicely covered, so they're obviously looking after it as best they can here to protect it from the elements. And these two ge gentlemen happened to be here when I arrived, and they're obviously wooden boat builders, um, much very knowledgeable people I should imagine, knowledgeable sirs, <laughs> and so um, yeah, this is a start to find out whether this Sarah can be rejuvenated or not, and um, he's out on his boat at the moment, okay, here we are at Sarah, she's been well covered up, I look to think so, Obviously, no, they do the right thing by her. I had a look inside Sarah, and she's no good. Yeah. Look at this lot. So, it's an expert's job, this. We've got a propeller in. The guy that owns her just had no kindness in him. And all he said was, pay me the money and take the boat away. <laughs> and he said, you can have a look inside. And there's no way to get there's no ladder, he doesn't even say here's a ladder to get it, he's just like this. Well, she's a project to write. I have no idea really, any of these people, just, they just know anything, don't know anything about life really. They live their life backwards. And his place is full of rotting wooden boats. I got inside Sarah I, at the risk of my life because if I fell while I was doing that I could have injured myself quite badly. Inside has just never been cleaned, never been touched, never no interest in this boat whatsoever by the current owner. Not the extent of even cleaning it out, tidying it up for the sale or anything. And the inside there's no headroom, you can't stand up, not like this boat. And as soon as I realised there's no headroom, I thought, what am I doing? And it's not it's actually a smaller boat than this, even though it's twenty nine foot, it's a smaller boat. 
it's narrower, it's not as deep and it's just the way they used to make them, it's just not really built for cruising. And so I immediately knew that Sarah was not for me and it was a bit of a relief really um, because I don't have enough capital money, uh, income to actually take on a project like that. I don't have the tools or the place to work or anything and without some friendly, kind person who is interested in the future of humanity and passing on what he'd learnt as a master boat builder, which I thought he might be, passing it on to the next generation in the form of a video log, documentary. People have no idea that this is a valuable thing. I'm doing this for free, you know. Um, it's an expensive thing. If you wanted to have a video made of anything, you would pay thousands and thousands um, to edit it and all that. People have no idea what you're doing. And so without this understanding, it's not possible to work together with people like this. But I did meet some interesting young people from the university. Um, last night I went and sat in, they were just finishing off their meal of bread and whatever it was, and um, chatting at the table. And I told them a few things about the journey of life and I feel that there was something accomplished there. You know. and so. After I decided that Sarah was not for me, I thought, well, what's the significance of this? And, and Elizabeth had sent me an email to say that Sarah was a matriarch of the universe. You know, she was like uh, Abraham's wife, and Abraham is a patriarch of the universe, and Sarah is a matriarch of the universe. And so she kind of like had been warming <laughs> to this Sarah name. So I sent her a message to say, look, I had this idea. Why don't I change the name of Tinkerbell from Tinkerbell to Sarah of North Wales? The full name Sarah of North Wales. I would write the full name on it. And it's in, and I said, did mention that part of one of the names of Tinkerbell has been scrubbed off. Um, uh, you know, part of the name is what's well, like the name wants to go by itself. I saw that as a small sign. Anyway, I went out for a walk after sending this email and I walked all over, had a cup of coffee in one of the places near the Bangor Pier and went into town. And when I was coming back after my long walk, I got to where the, the stones are and there was a stone circle there because there's like three or four stone circles all in the group. And there was one little small stone circle next to a a chopped down and starting to go rotten tree and out of corruption comes its opposite, everything comes out of its opposite and the stones, when I got to the stones I felt very tired, my back was very sore and so I thought I must lie down so I sort of got myself on the ground and oh, eased myself down and my phone was in, in my pocket, I felt things slipping in my pocket, so, you know you have to be careful, you could, your phone could slip out of your pocket. I don't even know whether I took it out of my pocket and put it down there. I might have even took it out of my pocket and put it down the grass thinking, there, you know where it is, now when you go take it, yeah. And I lay there, recovered for a while, and then I got up and I went. And I walked back towards this place here where the boat is. And on the way, there's a pub called uh, Lord Nelson. But the Nell, the N-E has fallen off and it's Lesson, it says L-Lson, it's like the, 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 the Lesson of the Lord, the Lord Lesson or something, well it's called the Nell, the Lesson, it's just called the Lesson. And as I passed the window there was an interesting chap standing there and he, he didn't look like he was a drunken man or you know, he like a really bright eyed, nice, nice elderly gentleman having a cold beer on a hot day and so I started to chat with him at the window and I chatted and chatted and chatted it went on and on and on and talking about interesting stuff and in the end I thought no I must go in I'll go inside this pub I haven't been in the pub for years I'll go in here and have a and I'll have a beer with this man 
I haven't had a beer for a while. So at the end of my voyage, I'm going to have one beer. I haven't had a beer for five years, maybe something like this. If I ever have a beer, I'll always regret it, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> so I went in and I ordered a small, just a half beer, and I drank this half beer and chatted with it him and another man there. We had a good conversation. And then I got up and went, and when I got to the boat here, I wanted to make some calls about, you know, a mooring and that. And lo and behold, I put my hand in my pocket, no silver, oh my God, I must have left it in the pub, you see. So I walked back all the way back to the pub, go to the pub, and um, I'd speak to the lady inside. No, no cell phone. The guys are still there drinking. Yeah. Turns out this guy's a real drinking man. <laughs> and um, no sign of the phone. So I thought, oh, maybe it's at the Stone Circle here. Yeah. And so that's miles back. And so I walk and I walk and I walk and I get to the Stone Circle. And there's kids everywhere. There's a children's paddling pool there and a swimming pool. And there's all sorts of kids and mothers. It's the sort of place where people hang out. Thought, oh, my God. Somebody's probably found this phone. And um, I got to the Stone Circle, there's a phone sitting right in the middle of the Stone Circle. And so I pick the phone up and I press it and turn it on. And there's a message on the phone that says, from Elizabeth, it says, about the changing the name of the boat to Sarah of Northway. She says, she says, yes, what a good idea. <laughs> and so nature had conspired to give me a big sign to tell me it's a good idea to change Sarah's name with my cell phone lost in the center of a stone circle. So what better confirmation can you have? That's a revelation that the name is um, the correct name. And I told this story to these students who were helping to renovate this wooden boat. And they said to me, you must make a video about that. <laughs> So this is for you guys, you students, that now I've made this video that you told me to make. I always am obedient to everything that's coming to me from nature. I've now made the video to explain how the name of Tinkerbell got changed to Sarah in an appropriate way. And it's an appropriate ending to the saga of the Sarah of North Wales Channel, how it started off as a wooden boat, changed into a fairy boat, and then the ferry boat changed its name to Sarah of North Wales. And so now I have the job, if you like, of making Sarah all good for next year, really. It's going to cost me a lot of money to keep this boat here, but I'm going to have to do it. And I'm going to have to come back and make it all nice, as best it can be. And then I'm going to paint its new name Sarah of North Wales on there. Mm -hmm.